Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I am a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today we got a foundation showdown, but this is with the same brand. So if you have not heard, Makeup Forever has come out with a reformulated HD foundation. So this is the HD Skin Foundation and I'm comparing it to the OG Ultra HD Foundation. So I will be doing a full day wear test on both of these foundations, showing you what it looks like in different types of lighting, flash photography, and then sharing with you my thoughts at the end of the day as to who I feel these foundations work best for and if I think it is worth your buy. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. So yes, when I saw that Makeup Forever was coming out with a new foundation, I was quite intrigued because the older formulation, I really wanted to like this. I have tried this foundation so many times and I just kind of concluded that it wasn't a good fit for my skin. There were times where I felt like it broke me out then it was a you know kind of hard to find a shade and then i finally found a shade and so anywho it just has not been a foundation that i feel has been best for my skin so you know i'm a foundation junkie and i was like is it different could it work for me now i don't know so that's what we're gonna see today so once again this is the new hd skin foundation it does come in 40 shades and it does retail for $43. Now, finding a shade was a beast, and I was actually in store swatching different shades. I almost didn't pick this up because I could not find a shade that I felt worked best. And this is not the best shade match for me, but we've been able to make it work. So the shade that I have is 3Y52, and 3Y52 says that it is for it's warm chestnut, and this is for tan skin tones with yellow undertones. Um, looking at the shade range, it looks like, you know, there's a good amount of like cooler tone, warmer tone shades, but I just, it, it just, ugh. Even using like the shade finder on Sephora's website, um, it was telling me over and over again, shade 3N48, that was way too light for me. So if you have a Makeup Forever near you, um, or if this is sold in your local Sephora, definitely go check it out in store because it was, it was definitely kind of hard to find a shade. And the shade that I wear in the original foundation is Y445. So there isn't any like similarity between the two. Now, what I will say is that if you're scrolling through the pictures and I'll put one up here too, it actually you get you uh, come across a slide that tells you like if you wear this shade in the ultra hd this is the corresponding shade in the new hd skin foundation it can be helpful for those of us who like have a shade that corresponds with the newer formulation um so that's that in this particular size we get 1.01 ounces or 30 milliliters of product and some high points of the foundation is that it's going to be long wearing have a natural finish, medium coverage. It's supposed to be waterproof and best for oily combination and normal skin. So this is an undetectable liquid foundation that blurs and covers imperfections for up to 24 hours. This is powered by a micro skin system that syncs with the skin for true to skin finish. So some highlights are that there's a micro skin system, once again, that's gonna really make this look like skin and adapt to your skin. It's going to smooth the skin and it has vegetable origin glycerol. This is gonna help to preserve the initial moisturizing of the skin for this 24 hour period. And then we have exopolysaccharide, which helps for radiance of complexion for up to 24 hours of wear. Um, some other high points about this foundation is that this is the new and improved Ultra HD foundation and it's going to look like skin under any light, studio, natural, what have you. It's gonna be comfortable, easy to apply, and it's gonna offer medium to full coverage. So not solid medium, but this is supposed to be buildable to full. And then lastly, it's going to be formulated in more sustainable packaging. So this is glass, um, but 40% of this glass is from recycled glass. And it also has an FSC carton, which this is the carton right here. And then the cap is biosourced. 
Um, last things about the foundation is that it is vegan, non-comedogenic. I already said it's waterproof. It's also supposed to be sweat proof. And um, that's it. So a lot of claims on this foundation and that's why I was really intrigued by it because I was just like, mm, there's there's a lot going on with this one. Um, so, so I applied this foundation with my, I think I used the Sonia G, yes, Sonia G mini base brush. Um, did not put a primer down or anything. I just had my skincare on my face prior to the application of the foundation. And when I first put it on, I, I don't really like the shade. The shade definitely appears more orange um, than it appears yellow. But blending it out on the skin, I think we were able to make it work. Um, and it doesn't look as stark as it initially looked. Um, and depending on how much I really like this foundation, I might spend some more time in the store and see if I can find a better shade because I, I kind of was rushing, but I did swatch on my neck um, about three or four different shades and I felt like this was the best one. So maybe I'll go back in store and play around with it um, if I really like the formulation of this. Blended it out, I will admit, it blended so nicely. And the finished product, like the finished look, I was like, well, well okay now, because this, this is nice. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. This is really, really nice. Even looking at my face from afar, I'm like, this is gorgeous. And I did not set my face with any type of powder on either side of my face. Um, so just wanna put that out there. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Um, I do have some breakouts and things like that. And I did cover some of my breakouts with um, the Danessa Myricks Color Fix product. I use shade Nude 5 because I wanted to tone down some of the redness. Um, and that's just a preference of mine. I've noticed with some of my foundation reviews I am distracted by the redness of my acne, so I wanted to kind of dull that down some before putting on the foundation. Um, I don't know if it was just, it was like a distraction to you all, but it was to me. So I did dull some of the redness prior to putting on the foundation, but I didn't dull all of it. So like redness that was from this acne bump here, I did not put the color fix on that prior to. I just kept it along my chin. Um, okay, so everything looks really beautiful i mean when i was done i was like okay 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 i would definitely say that the finish is very natural but there's a nice beautiful radiance like y'all already know what i'm thinking of comparing this one to next already just if you think of the word radiance light reflecting hint hint i don't even know if i winked properly with that <laughs> Um, but this, this looks nice, very nice. Now, the Ultra HD, so this is like my mini size of the actual shade that I have. This one, um, I was sent by another company, and this is shade Y385. This shade is a little light for me, but I will swatch both, you know, just so you can see. Um, but Y445, I felt like was the best shade match for me in the older formulation. So that's what I have on the other side of my face. So this is Y385. This is the older formulation. And then this one in the middle is Y445. That's what I'm actually wearing on my face. And then this is the Ultra Skin, the new HD um, foundation in the shade 3Y52. So as you can see, it, it has like an orangey, almost peachy hue to it compared to Y445 and of course, you know, Y385 is a lot lighter, a lot more yellow um, than these two. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful to you if you were trying to figure out your shade and not really sure where to start. Um, so like I said, this is this is what I actually used on my face, but I'm gonna hold up this one because it has a little more substance <laughs> and this is not the right shade. But applying the older formula on this side of the face, I think the finish is really beautiful and this is not sold anymore. It's not sold on Makeup Forever's website. It's not sold on Sephora. If you wanted to buy this older formulation, I'm pretty sure you could probably find it on like resale sites like eBay, maybe on Amazon, maybe on like Macari. Um, but just know you cannot buy this anymore from, you know, your Sephora's and Ulta's and Makeup Forever. Um, this one I remember being very long wearing, also very hydrating. And I remember when I first tried this, this was um, kind of dewy for me. And at the time I had oily skin and that's why it didn't work for me the first time because I felt like it was way too radiant 
for my preferences. Um, and then I tried this again when my skin had normal, had like kind of normalized. And I was like, okay, I like the finish, but then, like I said, I felt like it was breaking me out. I tried it a few times and my face broke out and I was like, is it the foundation or is it something else? And I just chalked it up to being the foundation and so I didn't really wear it too much after that. But um, I remember this one being really beautiful. This one also claims to have invisible coverage. So like, like the description said, this is the, reformu this is the reformulated version of this, the better formulated version. Um, the ounce, the amount of product that we get in the newer formulation is the same as the older one. So in the older one, this has 1.01 fluid ounce, 30 milliliters of product. Um, and yeah, applying this one, very beautiful, glided on really nicely. If I had to choose in terms of the tone, I like this tone better than this tone over here. But on the face, they look quite similar. They don't really look too much like there's a difference between the two. Um, I think it glided over my texture really nicely and I think both sides look really, really beautiful, really beautiful. Um, I would agree that both have a very natural finish. Both sides look great. Just to highlight something, um, on the Makeup Forever website, they are selling the um, HD Skin Foundation in a mini size for six shades. So if you can find your shade and you want to try the mini versus the full size, you can do that and purchase that on the Makeup Forever website okay so what taking these foundations in natural lighting both sides look really beautiful i was very impressed just off of initial application how both sides looked and i also felt like in natural lighting um this uh the um hd skin side looked like it really blended into my skin and, it, and like i said the shade didn't seem as off as i thought it was gonna look especially upon initial application like when i was blending it out um, took these outside in the sunlight, sun kiss, looked beautiful. Both sides, I really love how they mesh very well into the skin. I don't feel like either one is like sitting on top of my skin. Um, and I thought they both looked beautiful. And then putting these bad boys in flash photography. I mean, this is where we see the true HD come through. Stunning. Just stunning. So I am very happy with both sides of the of these foundations or both sides of my face, I should say. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one performs because since we can't purchase the Ultra HD version anymore, I really wanna see number one, personally, I'm like, is this formulation gonna break me out? I'm not really sure what was in the older formulation that I felt was breaking me out, but I wanna see, is this gonna break me out and agitate the acne that I already have? How is this gonna hold up on unset skin? I did not set my face with powder. Um, so I'm just gonna let it be, especially because this is claiming to be more suitable for people who have oily combination of normal skin. To me, that implies that this is gonna dry down to a very natural finish. So looking at my skin now, I don't feel the urge to set my skin and even touching my face. Um, the HD skin side feels a little less tacky than the Ultra HD side. This side feels like almost like it's completely, when I say completely dry, it like feels like my skin. Um, the Ultra HD feels just a slight more, slightly more tacky, it's just slightly more tacky, but not enough to where I feel like I need powder. So we're just gonna rock it like this, no powder set. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna go about my day. I've had, oh, let me tell you how long I've had these foundations on. Ooh, what time is it? So it's 5.33. I've had both of these foundations on now for about, about four hours almost. Yes, about four hours. Um, and so this is what we're looking like. And you know, let me come in close. I'm like all over the place. Let me just come in close. So this is what we're looking like after about four hours worth of wear. And I think both sides look great. I'm very happy with both of these foundations so far. Um, and I'm really hoping this works. Like I just personally want it to work. <laughs> So I will check back in at the end of the day, share with you my final thoughts, so stay tuned. Okay guys, we are back. It is the end of the day and I have had both of these foundations on for almost 12 hours. No, 12 hours now um, and your girl is tired. So let's come in close, see what things are looking so like. Remember we have the new HD skin on this side and then the older formulation on this side. And guys, I've been looking at my face and I'm just like, I, both sides look good. Like I really can't tell which side looks better, but I will say this. Um, I think 
the new formulated or reformulated version of the Makeup Forever Foundation really is holding up to its claims of being a like true skin type of foundation. Like all of the claims of this new reformulated version really attest to the foundation being very skin-like, adjusting to your skin and the movement of your skin so that it really becomes one with your skin. And I feel like this is what I'm getting on this side of the face. We don't see a lot of dewiness, we also don't see any dry areas. Like I don't feel like my skin looks dry. I think my skin just looks like skin. Um, this side of the face, I would say, definitely has some more radiance, just like just a slight more radiance on this side of the face. I'm not looking at this area because that's where I have concealer. Um, and I do have on two different concealers. But I am more so like looking on this side of my face and I do feel like I see a little more like radiance coming from this part of my face or this side of my face versus this side. So I feel like the Ultra HD might have been more, more like, I don't want to say dewy because I don't feel like my face looks dewy, but I do think we have a little bit more radiance coming from this side. Um, whereas the HD skin looks just very skin-like. But my skin, I feel like it still looks hydrated. It also feels hydrated. Like I don't feel like my skin feels dry, but this feels like skin. Feels very much like skin. <laughs> Um, in terms of coverage, I do have some wearing away of the foundation on my chin. You guys know I'm always touching my chin, so that is that. I didn't wear a mask today, so I can't really attest to... Yes, I did. Did I wear a mask today? No, I didn't. I didn't wear a mask today. Um, so I can't attest to, you know, how this would hold up under a mask. Um, my assumption is that there would be transfer. None of these are, you know, transfer proof. Um, this one is definitely claiming to be sweat proof and um, waterproof. So I will have to check back in about that um, because I didn't get to try that today. But all in all, I think this reformulated version is nice, like really, really nice. Um, I'm definitely impressed by it because like I told you all in the beginning, the older version, we just didn't mesh well. I mean, I like this side. I think this side looks beautiful, but I'm happy to know that at least for me and my preferences, this foundation is definitely one that I would want to keep and wear again. So for me, I see myself wearing this foundation like under really any occasion, everyday wear, but because of the HD property, um, I think it would do perfectly and very well for evening, you know, evening time, evening attire, special events, you know, out with the girls, date night, you know, you make it to the red carpet, it could work well for that. I think it's like one of those just all around like good foundations. That's pretty much what I'm getting from this. Um, and I'm here for it. Coverage is nice and medium. And like I, like, like I said, I'm just, I'm just here for it. Um, who I think this works well for. So I remember the claim saying that this foundation would be good for people who have normal combination oily skin. And I definitely could see why this foundation would cater toward those skin types. Um, but I don't see this being so natural in terms of a finish that I don't see this not working for people who might have dry skin. Like when I think of this foundation and the new Kosas foundation, I could tell that that new Kosas foundation may not be, you know, someone's preference if they have drier skin. I think this could be a nice fit for someone who has dry skin. Like I always say, go in with your hydrating primers, but I think this could work because this doesn't have like that so natural to almost like slightly matte finish. This has like a really natural but skin-like finish. So I am interested to hear your opinions. If you have dry skin, do you like this? Does this work for you? How do you make it work? Do you like it? You know, because I, I feel like someone with dry skin could like this. I do. It's just, it's so skin-like, but very much hydrating. Um, so yeah, I, I really think this could be one that all skin types could like. Um, and just, you know, adjust it to your preferences. Um, if you do, if uh, you have normal skin and dry skin, you definitely don't have to set this. Combination oily, yeah, you'll want to set it. 
Um, but I just think this is all around really good. And I'm not really talking much about the Ultra HD because this formulation is not sold anymore. So that's why I'm not really focusing on this side of the face um, because there's no point in like talking this up and then you can't get it. This is the one that you can get. So that's why I'm focusing on this one. But you know, if you had the older formula and you wanted to know, is it worth me getting the new formula? Is there really a difference? I think the biggest difference is just this really does have more of a skin-like finish. Um, I feel like I can see that compared to this side of the face. So I'm not gonna tell you that if you have the older formula, run out and get the newer formula, but I will say if you have the older formula and you like it, you might really enjoy this newer formula, you know, once you use up the older one. Um, or, or if you were like me and the older formula for some reason didn't work, maybe try the newer formula because I most definitely am very pleased with the finish of these, this foundation, how long it lasted. I mean, I feel like if I needed to keep going, I could really keep going. Might, you know, need to touch up here or there, but like I, I really could keep going. Um, so I'm very happy with this. I want to hear your thoughts down below. Um, tell me what you think. You know, tell me which side you think looks better. Even though we can't get the Ultra HD side anymore in terms of the foundation, but which side do you like better? I want to hear it all down in the comment section below. And if you've made it to this point in the video, you already know what I'm going to say, and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.